time for another episode of Library Gals Go to the Library, where your favorite bookworms give our recommendations from the Delaware County District Library. So don't worry, we'll help you find something new to get lost in. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Library Gals Go to the Library. We are super, super happy to have OG Library Gal Via back Hello. to an episode. It's always the best. I miss you. I'm back, baby. <laughs> and we have Via here with Andrew, who is an adult services specialist at Hello. our Delaware branch. And Via and Andrew have something super cool coming up this fall. So they are going to talk about what they have going on and invite you all to join them. So take it away, friends. What do you got going on? We are starting Comic Book Club. We um, have been working on this and wanting to do it for a very long time, and we are finally able to start it uh, this fall in September. Uh, so we are going to be having the comic book club on third Thursdays of every month from six to seven. And uh, we've already got our, our first three months uh, mapped out with what we're going to be reading. If, if uh, Andrew, you want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah. What's the first book? The first book, which we'll discuss uh, Thursday, September 15th, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, will be uh, Barely Functional Adult. Um, this one is, uh, it's based on an internet comic, correct, Via? Yes. That gained a lot of popularity, and it includes not just the strips themselves, but also some nice commentary by the writer and illustrator. Um that will be the first one again, September 15th um, on Thursday, October 20th. We're going to get into a little bit of horror with uh, The Nice House on the Lake. This is written by a prolific comic book writer. Many of you have read books by uh, named James Tynion. And uh, finally, we're going to dip into the Marvel world a little bit. Uh, specifically Black Panther on Thursday, November 17th with Shuri, the search for Black Panther. Um, we're picking things, again, geared towards adults, uh, but also trying to pick things that might have an appeal to older teens. Uh, we're trying to find things that are widely available at the library, since we are, after all, a library-run event. And we are, uh, a lot of what we have will be found on Hoopla as well. We're going to be doing a special movie night, which is uh, pretty much open for everybody. Um, we have it geared mainly towards teens and adults just because of the interest. But we're going to be showing the first Black Panther movie since we're reading Shuri to go along with the sequel that's going to be coming out uh, in the corresponding month. So that's going to be super exciting. Uh, also, we're going to have, um, we have a, a comic book club uh, library account set up. So we're going to be putting each month month's uh, comic that we choose. Uh, we're going to be putting some of those on hold. So if you're having trouble finding it, or if you just want to come and ask first, instead of looking all over the place, we will have some copies you can just pick up straight from there. And where is the screening of the Black Panther movie going to be? These are all, all of our meetings are going to be at Maine in the community room. Excellent. At our yeah. main branch. And you said the, the group is geared towards adults, but also some older teens? Yeah, they're, um, we wanted to, to find something to, to appeal to, um, to some of our adult readers. Juvenile and young adult reader probably would not be into most of these titles, but um, there are some for that sort of, um, you know, 16 to 18 year old range where you're not quite an adult, but you're certainly um, by that age, you know, probably graduating past the young adults and the, the teen graphic novels um but yeah with um I, we we would suggest that the that 16 and below maybe wait for a different club and a, a different set of books to read excellent that sounds so cool and so what was the idea for both of you behind starting this club what was your inspiration just being comic fans or anything yeah. in particular we're nerds. yeah definitely the start yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> very, very proud and true. I was gonna say, yeah. like, I guess the, the other thing for me um, is that, you know, like I've, I've grown up reading some comics, um, like I was really into the X-Men growing up and uh, it, the kind of resurgence for my want to do this was during the pandemic because my brain was just completely melted for novels. And so I turned just like strictly to comics and like comics got me through the pandemic being in quarantine and um, Hoopla also did save me because I had several checked out, but then I didn't have all of them. So I couldn't obviously go into the library and get more. So I, I relied on Hoopla to let me finish the series that I was reading, which was uh, Lock and Key, which I love. It's one of my favorites now. But um, yeah, that just kind of made me think, you know, uh, for those other people that either have like always had trouble reading or people that are like fresh out of school where they've been forced to read a bunch of, of novels the whole year and maybe you're having trouble getting back into like the love of reading. Um, this can be a great way um, to kind of be a gateway back into that, but also just there's such a there's such a, a, a stigma still about comics and graphic novels just being like a very like lowbrow type of literature. And so they've come so far in, in the years where they're telling amazing stories and they have a incredible artwork to go with them. And so we just want to be able to educate people more on that whole world and what it's really doing for people. And is there, I have a question that, I, that may not have a specific answer, but if you all have an idea, if a patron or say myself asks, what is the difference between a graphic novel and comics? Like, how do you differentiate between those? How would you describe that? I'll let Andrew, do you have a theory on that? Because mine mine will probably get me like flogged by by some people. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm sure that there's, you know, a widely accepted distinction. Uh, but to me, the difference is, um, a lot of these graphic novels, especially the ones geared towards adults that are coming out now, are saying something. And the way we've looked to, you know, traditional literature, uh, you know, forever, um, they're not just, you know, the the hero, you know, punching out the bad guy, or they're not, you know, just the silly slapstick comic strip. Um, there's some real story here, character development um, and artwork that. To me, comic book always seemed like we were just talking about the the Sunday funnies and graphic novel. Uh, at the very least, it's a good way to say, "Hey, I'm reading comic books," without sounding like you're a uh, an eight year old boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. You're not just like uh, looking at newspaper racks at the drugstore in the fifties. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Right. And we'll definitely be talking about that in the club, like kind of the difference between it, like how effective we think short strips are versus like you know thick boys because <laughs> for, for me yeah for me like comics and graphic novels i kind of just use like interchangeably but i would definitely like i would never call like the, like watchman or mouse a comic like that's like that's a graphic novel because it's mm -hmm. you know so thick and that's yeah that i don't really see any um like young adult or juvenile comics that are quite that thick so i think that's you know the only really difference that i give it excellent and the first book that so you're re you're meeting on the third Thursday in September. Mm -hmm. And what was the first book you're reading again? That would be Barely Functional Adult. Um, I'm gonna butcher the author's last name. Do you do you have a pronunciation, Via? I do. Yes, it's. Um, I'm hoping this is correct. I, I had to look it up, but a Mechi Ng. Okay. Yep. Cool. That sounds really exciting. And it's funny. I've I've already started reading it, and and I really like the the little like sidebars of of store like explanation with the comics. Um, yeah, just like every every bit of of writing that that a uh, Mechi does is funny. So, <laughs> yeah. excellent, cool. Some very well, witty I references to things that all adults have experienced here. Nice. Yeah, very relatable. And and so you'll have copies of that available at the Delaware branch for people to pick up? Yes. Yeah, okay. the, um, we'll have a stack of them at Delaware, but happily uh, we'll be sending them to Orange or Powell or Ostrander, wherever folks would like to pick those up. Great, so if anyone is interested, and I know I am, you can pick up a copy of Barely Functional Adult, The Nice House on the Lake, 
and or Shuri uh, at the Delaware branch, or if you'd like to have a copy of that sent to your preferred location to pick up, uh, you can do that and join the comic book club discussion group on September 15th for their inaugural meeting. I think this is such a great idea. So Via, I know you had a, a recommendation uh, aside from these books for, for folks getting into for graphic novels. Andrew, do you have any recommendations? We can kind of go back and forth if you want. If sure, not, that's I've... okay too. Um, Via, if you want to make your recommendation and then Andrew, and then I have some recs as well. Excellent. Yeah. Um, so the one that I read recently was called The Lolo Woods by Carmen Maria Machado. Um, and it is uh, part of Joe Hill, Stephen King's son's uh, a Hill House imprint. Um, and I was looking up imprints because I was looking for kind of a more like a one shot one-off comic that I didn't have to invest in a huge series in between novels and uh, I, I'm a huge horror fanatic so no surprise that's what I'm recommending but don't worry our club doesn't do just horror so we do a bit of everything I do I do love everything um, but this one was just it has such an incredible story and message to it um, so when I, I found this one I knew that I, I wanted to give one of his a shot but it's about um, when your memories are stolen, what would you give to remember? Follow L and V as they search for answers to the questions everyone else forgot. Shudder to think Pennsylvania is plagued by a mysterious illness that eats away at the memories of those affected by it. L and Octavia are two best friends who find themselves the newest victims of this disease after waking up in a movie theater with no memory of the past few hours. As L and V dive deeper into the mystery behind their lost memories, they realize the stories of their town hold more dark truth than they could have ever imagined. It's up to L and V to keep their town from falling apart, to keep the world safe from Shudder to Thinks monsters. Ooh. So yeah, definitely a spooky vibe there. Um, and what originally drew me to this comic besides um, just the, the looking for a kind of one-off one was the art for sure. Um, it has such a heavy use of red and black that um, is just really edgy and stark and calls your attention. And it works really well with the genre and the theme um, and creating shadows um, like during parts of the, when they're in the low, low woods um, and, and just some, some of the night scenes, you know, it, it really creates a good shadow with that. There was also this deer woman creature thing on the back and I love deer and I love like folk horror and woodsy horror. So I just knew I had to read it. I had to find out what this dear woman was. Um, and uh, so it's just, uh, it was something I could really invest in. Um, and it hits you in the heart by the end of it, because it does talk about some very topical issues in the end when you're finding out kind of um, the reason behind some of these mysteries. Um, and I think many people will be able to to relate to kind of the ending and what the story talks about, even with the uh, two main characters being uh, younger than adults. Um, so it's also it's the, the comic is a bit surreal and a bit metaphorical. Um, so uh, if you're if you're not into that kind of thing, then you may just want to um, know that going in. But also, um, I just think that it, it really helps to explain what's going on. But one of the things that I love is this comic doesn't uh, it, it does give you answers to a lot of what's happening and the initial mystery, but it doesn't give you all of the answers so that it still leaves things kind of mysterious and and fun and make you just kind of think as you as you walk away from being done uh, reading it. So I do highly recommend that. Um, and uh, I picked up my copy uh, from the Orange Branch. So we do have that within our, our main branch libraries, but you can also look throughout CLC. I'm sure we have plenty of copies. And that was The Low, Low Woods? Yes, The Low, Low Woods by Carmen Maria Machado. And that one is also available in Hoopla. Um, if you are not familiar, that is a service the library has. It's a, one of our digital resources where you can check out a number of graphic novels and comics. Um, it has a really cool feature for the um, comic reading where you can read panel by panel and mm -hmm. a full page spread, which I think is really cool. Um, I read and I haven't finished, but one of my favorite series is Saga. And all Ooh, the yeah. ones are in, in Hoopa. I highly recommend that one. Andrew, do you have a recommendation for folks? Yeah, real quick, I'll just share with you um, Rorschach by Tom King. Tom King is, um, he's, he's been writing comics for a number of years. He's a fascinating guy. The author himself was uh, 
of he's a former CIA employee, um, but he has he he writes incredible stories. Um, I, the hallmark of a good Tom King story, uh, like so many of these graphic novel writers now, is you think you know exactly where this story is going and and you don't. Um, Rorschach picks up uh, 35 years after the end of The Watchmen, um, the the comic and the movie. Um, there is apparently a new Rorschach on the scene and we follow a detective as he tries to track down Rorschach and find out what he's really up to. Um, you, the reader know that Rorschach is a hero. He's trying to save the world. Um, but we don't know from what, um, or who this new Rorschach is exactly. Um, if you, if anybody out here enjoyed the Watchmen movie, enjoyed reading any of the Watchmen, uh, comic books, uh, you'll, you'll love Rorschach. Um, highly recommended. It's a quick read. I had a hard time putting it down. And, and most of Tom King's are like that. He, he just did a turn with uh, Batman that was incredible. So he's writing all the, the major, major stars for DC and Marvel right now. And, um, and this one is just a, another good one, Rorschach. That sounds excellent. Awesome. I yeah, Rorschach and uh, Dr. Manhattan are my favorite Watchmen characters, so I'll definitely have to pick that one up. Absolutely. Very good. I really love the Watchmen. It's been so long since I've read it. Um, it's funny that when you said that, you know, it's a fast read, when I read graphic novels, or when I read regular novels, I always read to the end of a chapter. Like, I know where to stop. And that's one thing I struggle with with graphic novels when I pick them up. Unless it has a clear break, I'm reading that thing until it's over. <laughs> like, it's yeah. just nonstop. Yeah. Um, but you're right. Like it gets you out of a reading slump. It's a whole different way to get information. And sometimes, most times, the artwork is so gorgeous that it just adds so much more to the story. It takes that text and makes it so much more uh, impactful because of the art that is being used. That's really Absolutely. great. Well, if you are curious and want to know more about graphic novels and or want to talk to fellow graphic novel and comic readers, the comic book club starts in September at our Delaware main branch. Please Anything come join else? us. Yes, come join. Yeah, this sounds <laughs> join like us. <laughs> we're nerds, but we're the fun kind. <laughs> <laughs> cool nerds. Make comic books cool again. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Well, it was really excellent talking with both of you. I really appreciate that. And I, I hope that you have a great crowd and and if you, anyone has any questions you can email library guys at delawarelibrary.org or you can send an email to ask us at delawarelibrary.org and we will get you all the info that you need so That's thank right. you so much thanks, yeah Jane. thanks for having us i'm so excited for the comic book club i cannot wait for that to get off the ground they will meet on the third Thursdays in, starting in the fall in September. Comics and graphic novels have been incredibly popular and are popular for all ages. We have graphic novels for kids too. And here at the Orange Branch, those have been very popular this summer. They're so fun to read and they really get kids interested in reading too. One of the most popular books we have seen here and get asked questions about all the time is Dog Man. If you have any kids really between the ages of 6 and 11, 12, they probably have read Dog Man and they might be asking you for the next thing for them to read. We have so many folks asking for Dog Man that we came up with five books to request while you wait for Dog Man. These are other graphic novels and also some chapter books that kids might like. The chapter books do have some drawings in them, and they really run the gamut, but they are still silly and fun to read, just like Dogman. The first recommendation is the Bad Guys series by Aaron Blaby. The Bad Guys, Mr. Wolf, Mr. Shark, Mr. Snake and Mr. Piranha want to be heroes, and they decide that the way to do it is to free 200 dogs in the city dog pound. But their plan soon goes awry. There are currently four graphic novels in the Bad Guy series. Next, we have Cat Ninja by Matthew Cody. 
Raised from a kitten by a kindly old ninja master, Claude now spends his days as the pampered house cat of an 11-year-old boy. But when trouble arises, Claude dons his mask and springs into action as Cat Ninja, Metro City's secret protector. In book one of the series, follow our feline hero's early exploits as he tries to keep his secret identity under wraps while thwarting the evil plans of slimy thugs, rampaging robots, and a certain rodent nemesis who lives under the same roof. There are three graphic novels in the Cat Ninja series by Matthew Cody. Keeping with our cat theme, we have Max Meow by John Callagher. This book starts, or this series starts with Pugs from Planet X. Meowza! Space pugs have landed in Kittyopolis and they're after the space meatball that gave Max his powers. Can Max and Mindy save Kittyopolis? Sometimes being a hero means knowing when to ask for help, and it will take a whole universe of bad guys working together to stop these space dogs. Luckily, Max and Mindy have backup. Meet Rex Rocket, Intergalactic Space Guard, and get ready for Kittyopolis' bad guys to become good, at least temporarily, to join the adventure. Right now, Max Meow has two graphic novels in this series. Our next recommendation is a chapter book that is still a lot of fun and very silly. This is The Chicken Squad by Doreen Cronin. Dirt, Sweetie, Poppy, and Sugar might be chicks, but they aren't chicken. They're the chicken squad, and it's up to them to figure out what tail the not-so-brave squirrel is so afraid of. When he describes it as big and scary, that doesn't give much insight as to what is lurking behind the coop. Can our feckless, fluffy heroes defeat something that could very well be gulp from out of this world? There are four books in the Chicken Squad chapter book series by Doreen Cronin. And our last recommendation for books like Dogman is Pup Detectives by Felix Gumpaw. In this first installment of the Pup Detectives graphic novel series, the Pup Detectives of Poston Elementary join forces to solve the crimes happening all around them. Can they nab the lunchtime bandit who's been stealing all the best snacks from the cafeteria? Pup Detectives will find out. This one has seven graphic novels in this series. So if you have a kiddo in your life that just can't wait for their next Dogman book to come in, ask if any of these titles are available at the library or download the library app to make a request. Thanks so much for tuning in to this comically good episode of Library Gals Go to the Library. We will see you again soon. Join us next time on Library Gals Go to the Library, where we geek out about books, movies, and more. You can email us your questions, comments, or concerns, any feedback you like, at libraryguys at delawarelibrary.org. To check out all the digital resources mentioned in today's episode, or to request any items for your reading, viewing, or listening pleasure, visit delawarelibrary.org. We'll see you soon. Thank you.